Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make a custom torched wooden red line flag. Let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is cut 13 37 inch pieces of this uh, 1 by 2 I just have eight foot strips, and if you want to rip something down to this size, it's an inch and a half wide by three quarter inches deep. All right, now we got all those cut, and now we're just gonna take uh, four of these scraps and cut them at 18 inches, and we'll use those for our backer pieces, and then we're gonna take one of our other scraps, and uh, I like to use these just for my hangers on the back, and you'll just cut two pieces at about four inches. All right, so now we're done cutting all of our wood. We got, actually have uh, 14 of these at 37 inches, just cause I like to have an extra in case I mess up uh, burning one. And then we have four of these at 18 inches, and then we have these two at four and a half inches. And the next thing that we can do is just quickly look through these and find, um, I just like to find which side I think looks better out of these pieces that we'll use for the face. And then we're just gonna lightly sand over them so that they get a nice even burn. And to sand them, I'll just be using some 220 grit uh, fine sandpaper just to get rid of any of these little scuffs or anything and just to give them a nice smooth finish. And then we'll be ready to burn them. All right, so we got them all sanded and now we are ready to uh, torch them. So I just use one of these uh, burns matic propane torches. And when you're torching, you just wanna move really nice and slow and um, try not pause anywhere because otherwise it might leave like a, a burn spot. But uh, let me just kind of show you how I burn them. And this is totally a personal preference. So if you wanna burn them darker, that's totally fine. And if you wanna burn them lighter, that's totally fine. And uh, the darker you burn them, the uh, darker the stain will appear on them. So you can just keep that in mind. Uh, if you want your flag to look super dark, you could burn these dark and then when you stain it, uh, it would make it look a lot darker. But let me show you how I, how I burn them and what I like. So that's the look that I kind of go for. Some of them might be a little bit lighter and a little bit darker, but I just like it where it, uh, you can see the grain through it still, and there's still enough light spots to where it doesn't look too dark to me. But now we're gonna go ahead and burn the rest of these and we'll be ready to start staining. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is stain them. Uh, I like to quickly organize mine before I stain them. Um, so I just got, as you can see, there's like two different types of grains depending on how the wood was cut. So um, I usually just use these straight grain for my uh, black stripes, and then I like to keep these wavy grains for my white stripes. Um, you can organize them however you want, but that's something you might wanna just keep in mind when you're picking out your wood, cause you'll be able to tell um, at the store that these are just straight and then that these have this wavy grain on them. But we're going to be staining, um, starting at the top, we'll be doing every other one black. For my black, I use this uh, Varathane water-based wood stain, and it is tinted in midnight, and I get this from Home Depot. And then for the red, I'll be using uh, Minowax water-based wood stain, and then this one is tinted in scarlet and this is from Lowe's and then we'll be staining 
the sixth one from the bottom. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll be staining this one right here red. So it'll be the one just below the union. So first we're gonna get all the, the solid black ones stained and then I can show you how to stain the three that will need to be um, stained only partially for the union. And to stain, I just use a rag and um, you can use a stain brush or a foam brush or whatever you want. I just prefer to use a rag. And when you're staining, you also wanna stain uh, just inside these edges with the black, just so that no white shows through in case they don't sit perfectly flush. And I'll leave the very bottom and the very top unstained just so that um, at the end I can sand it and then burn it and and then it will be a nice, clean, consistent border all the way around. All right, so I got a first coat on all these black stripes. I'll do two coats on everything. Um, so for the union, we're gonna take our top three white stripes and we can just set them over here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure from the uh, left side. So in this case, these are from the top, so this would be the left side. And we're gonna measure 14 and three quarter inches over. And we'll just make a tiny little mark on each one. And then we're gonna take some uh, three uh, utility blades and then we're gonna take a speed square and we're just gonna put it right lined up with that mark so that this will give you a perfect 90 degree and then you just want to set your razor blade in there right next to the speed square and then just tap it in And then you can double check with your speed square and make sure that it went in there straight. And then you just wanna check after you tap it in, um, just make sure that that blade is far enough in there to where nothing will bleed through. So just, just like that is fine. You just wanna make sure that it's not like hovering above it and right there, that's fine. So now we can just do that to these other two and when we go through and stain it, you can just stain right up to the edge and that will give it a really nice clean line and there won't be any bleeds. All right, now we got a first coat on all of these. So I'm gonna go through and second coat all of those, and then I can second coat these, and then we'll be ready to stain our red stripe. All right, now we got a second coat on all these black ones. Uh, let me quickly pull one of these off so you can see what it looks like. There we go. And that is a nice, clean, perfect line with no bleeds. So like I said, for the red one, it will be the sixth one up. So it will be this one right here. And then we'll be using this red and scarlet to do two coats on that. If you want it to be darker, you can do three coats, or if you like how it looks with one coat, that's perfectly fine, but uh, two coats is what I do.
All right, now we got them all stained. Uh, now we're just gonna bring them up onto the table so that we can get them all glued and nailed together. And then once we got it up on the table, we just wanna completely just flip it over. And then after that, we just wanna go and on the bottom and the top stripe, on either side, we just wanna measure two inches over and make a mark, and then 14 inches over and make a mark, and then do that from both sides. And then these will be our guide marks for when we put our 18 inch backer strips on, we can just put it, and we'll put them right on the insides of those marks, and then we can just easily just line those up, and then we're not trying to uh, measure anything when we're gluing and nailing it. All right, after we got those marks on there, we can just go through and stand all these up on their edge like this. And then we're gonna run a bead of glue down on each edge. And I like to keep it towards the back just so that uh, I lessen the chance of glue getting pushed out the front because we'll have to clean all that off, any of it that does get pushed out the front. And then I like to just quickly go over it with my finger. And then once you got that all wiped, you can just flip them all down. And then now we wanna make sure that they're all lined up on the edge. And then we can get a clamp ready. I just use these uh, 20 inch bar clamps. And then these allow me to clamp across the whole flag. And then usually, uh, unless you're doing this on a perfect, on a flat table, um, you can just push down on the table, but I just got some blocks under it just cause I don't know how flat this table is. And I just got one right below my marks just so that when I push down on it, I can push my block directly down on it and then that will get them all nice and flush. And then I like to put my first clamp just a little bit in from the edge. So I'll just get this one a little bit tight. Just so that they're not gonna move anywhere. And then I like to glue uh, these backer pieces on as well. Some people say that uh, just doing one or the other, gluing in between or gluing the backs will just be enough by itself, but I like to do them both. I'm probably just wasting glue and time, but just put a strip on there and some on the back. And now we can just push down and then I'll get my second clamp right on the edge, like this. So then I can hold down as I tighten it just so it doesn't try and buckle on me. One time I wasn't pushing down on it and the whole thing just bowed up right in the middle. So I wanna try and avoid that. And then I just wanna push down and tighten this up. Also, I can also tighten this inside one too, as I go just so that they're, just so they stay the same. And then using an 18 gauge brad nailer with inch and a quarter nails, we just wanna go through and uh, put two nails per stripe. Once you got that one nailed off, you can just pull off your clamp from the end and then just jump over this one that we have right here. And then we can move on to the next one. I just like to leapfrog the clamps over so now we can move on to this one and then you'll just do the same thing. And uh, make sure that your depth isn't set too deep on your nail gun, otherwise the nails might stick, stick out the front. this clamp off and move it over here.
And then for these two little pieces, I like to just line these up with the second to the top stripe and then put them on either side. And then I use those for the hangers. I use sawtooth hangers. So if you don't wanna use sawtooth hangers, if you just wanna use a different style hanger, you could just use these um, as something to screw to, but I like to add those on. So that is just optional, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw them on. And then we can go ahead and pull our clamps off and flip it back over. And then if you see any glue that came through, just take a razor blade or something and just get it off of there before it um, hardens up. And next we're gonna move on to the stars. All right, for the stars, I'll be using one of these stencils. I can link them down below if you wanna order one. I've used the same one for probably about like 30 flags or something and it still works just fine. So um, it's a sturdier one, so it holds out pretty well. But all we're gonna do is line it up on this right side with these um, these marks right here. And then I think my boards are just, just a little under an inch and a half. So there's like a little bit of overhang on the top and on the bottom. So I'm just gonna kind of center it right there and then I'll tape it on the left side and then I'll just put three little pieces of tape on this right side just to hold it in place. And then we'll just go through and mark them all out with a pencil so then we can carve them out with the Dremel. All right, now that we got those all traced out, as you can see, and now we are gonna take our Dremel tool. Uh, I have a Dremel 3000 and I have a, a flex shaft attached to it with a little dust blower tip. And for the outlines of the stars, I'll be using the tip number 105. It's the smaller uh, wood carving tip. And then to do the middles, I'll do the 106. That one's a little bit bigger. Um, I used to just only use the 106 to do the whole thing. So you could use the 106, but um, I like to use the 105 for the edges just to get them a little bit cleaner. There's the two of them side by side. So the 105 uh, will just get let you get a little bit cleaner uh, points on your stars. And then the 106 is good for carving out the middles. But like I said, you can use the 106 for the whole thing. And um, let me just show you how it looks. All right, so I got the 105 tip on there, and I'm just gonna turn my Dremel on full speed. It does not work when the power's not hooked up. All right, let's try that again. And you just wanna do it really slow. Um, I like to rest my palm on something, like a piece of cardboard, just so that I don't smudge any of the uh, stain around. And then you just wanna try and keep your hand in the same spot, and then just, I just slowly move back and forth. And then sometimes it helps to just go straight across and go all the way to the top and then go all the way down just so that your lines stay a little straighter. And uh, yeah, let me just show you how it looks. will just look something like that and then I'll use the 106 bit to go through and do all the middle of it and when you're carving out the middle you just want to try and not push too hard but just try and just like skim over the top of it almost just like as if you're just like coloring on it because if you push too hard um, any soft spots in the wood it will just sink down so you just want to like try and control how much you're pushing. I can show you that once I'm done outlining them, but uh, for now we're just gonna go through and just outline all of these, and then we can switch over to the other tip.
All right, now that we got them all outlined, I can go ahead and switch over my tip to the 106 bit. And there we go. And let me quickly show you uh, what this one looks like. And like I said before, you just wanna try and control how hard you're pushing. And that is what it looks like. But now I'm gonna go through and fill in all the middles. All right, now we're all done with the stars. So now we can move over to the other engraving that we're gonna do on it. So with how I'm gonna do this, you could pretty much take any um, badge or name or pretty much anything you'd wanna carve on it. And you just gotta print it out onto some paper like this. Do your best to find a clear image. I would prefer if this one was like a little bit clear just because like some of these are a little bit grainy so I'm gonna have to kind of guess a little bit and just try and do as good as I do as best I can to just get them nice and clean but um, if you can find like a really clear image and if you can blow it up to this size and it's still really clear then it will work really well if you want to print something out like this how it's um, separated onto two pages I can show you real quick how to do that so the way that I adjust my pictures is I open them up in paint and then um, when it's in paint, you can go to the under file, select print and then go under print preview. And then once you're in there, uh, you just wanna go under page setup and then you can change the adjust to size and the fit to size and then that will make adjustments to it and then right there it will give you a preview of how it's going to print. And then also I've heard that Rapid Resizer is a program that you could use to increase the size of it onto more than one page, but that's just the way that I use. And then once you got that printed out, then we just want to quickly cut the excess off of one of these pages. So I'll just quickly cut this off. You should be able to set your margins to zero and then you shouldn't have to do this step but I already have mine printed out, so I'm just gonna quickly cut it off. And then we can just take that off. And then we just want to line these up as best we can and tape them together. Try avoid taping like in the actual image itself, just so that the tape doesn't get in the way. All right, just like that. And then we just wanna figure out where we're gonna position it. So um, this is kind of just a personal preference of where you think it would look the best for whatever flag you're doing. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of center it um, on this red line and then center it between this gap and this gap. And uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but once you get it kind of where you want it, then you just want to um, tape these edges just like of the paper to the wood and then you can fold it back and tape it on the back also and then on the top i'll also add a piece of paper and then just tape it to this piece and then tape that to the back uh, just because i don't want to tape to the face as much because i don't want it to peel up any of the wood or any of the stain uh, i might tack like you know just maybe like two small pieces on the white stripes and then uh, once we got that all tacked down then we'll be ready to start carving it all right and that's what it's going to look like so now we can grab our dremel tool again 
And for this, you just gotta kinda look at whatever you're carving and just see what tip will work. So like for all these bigger letters right here, I can easily get away with using the 106 bit, the one that's a little bit bigger. And you know, for probably all this stuff and all this and the whole outline, but maybe for like these top and bottom letters, I might wanna use that smaller tip one just because the font is like a little bit small. You know, I might be able to get away with using this one, but you just wanna use your best judgment to think of what tip will work best for whatever you're doing. And um, also you wanna start in the middle and work your way out just so that um, like if you carved out this whole badge and you did the whole outside of it, then your whole paper would be loose and then you know you wouldn't know where anything else goes. So you'd, you just wanna start at the middle and just work your way out. And for something like this where it's like black, white, and gray, you just wanna look at it beforehand and just think of like, are you gonna carve on the outside of this line and then carve on the inside of this line? And you know, just kind of think about what you're gonna do before you just start carving just so that you don't end up, you know, just so you don't carve inside this line and then inside this line and then it doesn't look um, proportionate. So you just wanna think about it before you start carving into it just so you don't mess it up. First, what we want to do is just lightly go through and just outline all the lines of it mainly so that then after we can pull it off and then we can uh, do everything in a little more detail and get it um, nice and clean. But uh, the paper is just here just to get our initial outline and just figure out where all the lines are. So that is what we're going to do first. And for this, what you want to do is just take your Dremel and just uh, slowly carve through the paper and then the wood will be directly below it and then you just slowly carve onto the wood and all you want to do is make just a, a small line or just a small outline so you uh, just want to barely carve into the wood you don't have to carve in too deep or anything uh, I can just show you real quick what it looks like So as you can see, uh, that's a red stripe right there and it's carving right through it and it's making a nice outline so that uh, when we pull this all off, we'll have a nice outline of everything that we can go through and carve out a little bit better. All right, now we got our outline done, so go ahead and peel this off and see how it turned out. I did end up doing uh, these letters with just my 106 tip, and uh, I think it'll work out fine. It was a little hard just with how fuzzy the picture was, but the size of the tip wasn't too bad. All right, so now I think what I'm gonna do is just lightly torch um, these two areas right here where the wood isn't as dark just so that it will make this uh, pop out a little bit more once we go through and carve out everything a little more detailed. So I'm just going to grab my torch and add that and then using my 106 bit I'll just go through and just um, make everything a lot more defined and uh, I still got to carve out the whole middle of this and I got to carve out the whole middle of the circle. So I'm going to grab my torch and burn this a little bit darker and then we'll go ahead and carve the rest of it. Thank you. 
and add a tiny bit on the bottom and the top just to make it sort of look like it continues all the way through. And if you want to, you could also do it with the black stain and just brush it on. Um, I did the thin blue line flag like that and I can show you what that looks like if you would prefer to do that. But um, for this one, I thought it might look cool to just have that, the burned wood look in there. So I think that'll look pretty good. Now we just wanna go through and finish cleaning up all the edges now that we got our outline on here. And uh, we'll see how it looks when we're all done. All right, now we're all done with carving our design. I think it turned out pretty good. And next what I do is I just go through and just sand um, sand all the edges and then just do a really light torch on them just to kind of match this right here. And then that will give it a nice, even, consistent look all the way around. And then I'll also lightly torch over the stars just to give them a little bit of a, just a little bit of a burn, not too dark. And then we want to throw the hangers on the back and then we'll be ready to spray it and seal it. So I lightly torched over the stars just to give them a little bit of burn. You can keep them the natural color of the wood, just the white if you want to. Um, I just burned them just because I think that looks a little better, but it's totally up to you. And then I just lightly went around the edges and uh, gave those a nice burn. So now we're just going to flip it over and throw some hangers on the back real quick. So uh, I like to use these little sawtooth hangers, uh, but if you want to, you could use the wire hangers or the little ring hangers or whatever you want. Anything that is a, just like a picture style hanger. And all I do is just measure down using a speed square. I just measure down uh, seven eighths of an inch and then I make, mark it on uh, both sides. And then I just put this over here and then I just make a straight line across it. And then I go on the other side and do the same thing and make a line um, the same distance down. And then usually I'll just make a mark at two and a half inches. So holding it right here, I'll just make a mark. And it doesn't have to be the same as mine or anything. I'm just showing you what I do. And then I'll just make a mark right there. And then I'll just screw in that side and then I'll hold it on the line and then I'll screw in the other side. And then that should get your hanging spots pretty straight with one another. All right, so that's what those hangers look like when they're put on. And uh, now all we got it left to do is just clean up the face of it and then we'll be ready to spray it. So just brush off all this dust and whatnot. And then uh, to spray it, I just use this Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear Enamel and I'll do three light even coats on the whole thing and that should give it some good protection. And that is what it looks like all finished up. Please let me know if you guys have any questions down below and I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.